Now, these are some of the biggest mistakes you'll want to avoid when it comes to actually leveraging your credit card points. These mistakes could easily cost you thousands in forfeited rewards if you're not careful. So stay tuned. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is redeeming their points for cash or statement credits. The issue with that is that you're getting a lot less value per point, as low as 0.6 cents per point than you would be getting otherwise. I typically recommend you try to get around bare minimum one to two cents per point, if not more. So how do you actually go about calculating value? You can always easily calculate how much value you get per point by dividing the cost it would have been for you to actually pay for that reward by the amount of actual points that you've spent. So in the case of the statement credit of $60, you'd need 10,000 points to be able to redeem it. That's where the actual point per value of 0.6 cents per point comes from. So when it comes to my solution is I would never redeem for cash. I found that the best bank for my buck would be redrawing through typically travel partners. A perfect example of that is this. Currently, there's a bonus for certain travel partners. I've seen, uh, you know, a 25% bonus if you transfer your membership rewards points to British Airways, Avios points, for example. Now, British Airways would allow me to book an American Airlines flight destination from Miami all the way to Cancun. Right now, economy that's going to cost me 7,500 Avios points and $37.30. Right, so I would only need 5,000 membership rewards points because of the bonus. Now, when I look at regular prices on American Airlines website, I see that an economy flight would cost me $232 for this exact flight on this exact date. Now, when it comes to the value per point. So I divide the ticket price minus the fees by my membership rewards points that I originally transferred. And I see that an economy flight would give me 3.8 cents per point. So there you can see just how much value that I'm able to get compared to me doing a, you know, a statement credit for certain charges. Now, another mistake that I've seen people make is not checking award availability before transferring their points or their miles. You always want to make sure to actually go to the airline where you're going to be booking the flight and trying to see if they actually have award availability before you transfer your points. Now, most of the transfer partners are going to be pretty much instantaneous transfers. Some of them can take a couple days and that's where the risk can lie. But I always try to make sure that there's actual availability before I even think about jumping into transferring my points. Now, there are moments when it can make sense, especially if there's a travel partner that you're always frequently using. You know, I have a transfer partner such as British Airways, which I've used, you know, two to three times in the last year or so and in that case it would make sense for me to be to just transfer the points uh, especially if i see some sort of a bonus offer that just makes sense but i'm always hesitant just because i've heard horror stories of people transferring you know 50,000 points to an airline only to realize that the availability that they saw two months ago was no longer there so you always want to be careful again so my solution is i always check to make sure that there's decent availability and also check how long the delivery time is on my points transfers so i know Right. Again, some partners can take a few days and don't before they actually receive the points that you've transferred over. Mistake number three is not meeting a car's minimum spend and missing out on the welcome offer. Now, one of the best ways to actually accumulate a large amount of rewards points in the short term is meeting the sign up bonus or the sub requirements. Now, typically, the more desirable cards will have some sort of sign up bonus, such as, you know, the Amex Gold card. I recently actually got that card and a sign up bonus of 75,000 points after spending uh, 4,000 dollars in six months so pretty much you have to spend roughly 670 dollars per month for the first six months and you would be able to get that sign up bonus now the mistake people make is not keeping track of their progress and making sure that they can actually still meet it before the deadline now, I typically prefer to meet that sign up bonus offer as soon before the deadline as I can to be safe. Now, what I do is I set typically a reminder on my calendar and I also write down the exact amount of the spend that's needed. That way I can easily check to see how much time is left as well as just be able to get, a, you know, set alerts, you know, two weeks, one month out so I can make sure that I'm staying on track. Now, that actually rolls perfectly into mistake number four. This is going to be overspending to meet the minimum spend or just to spend in certain bonus categories. You know, I think sometimes folks tell me about how they met the minimum spend and it has to do with them, you know, overextending themselves or spending way more than they would typically do in their, you know, everyday life. Now, just for background, that's the whole idea of offering a sign up bonus from the bank's perspective. They hope that by offering you a sign up bonus, it's gonna make you wanna actually spend more on the card and end up incurring more interest when you don't actually pay off the balance at the end of the month. The other side is folks start spending more to actually meet certain bonus categories than they actually were doing in the past. 
Now, when it comes to my solution, my first step is always to try to make sure that the card I'm considering signing up for can actually be incorporated into my everyday life. The perfect example of this is the latest card that I got, the Amex Gold card. And I'll link to a video I shot on that down below. Now, I got it because I did the math and I knew that I, when I looked at my current expenses for groceries and me going out with friends, the fact that this card gave me 4x points per dollar spent on those categories made it worthwhile for me. Now, next what I do is I try to plan the time I'm actually going to sign up for the card for when I need to make big purchases so I can easily meet the sign-up bonus. For example, if I had been saving to buy a new camera that I knew was going to cost me $1,000 and I knew I wanted to get my hands on another credit card at the same time, I would just knock out both of these, right? Two birds, one stone. That way I could pay for the camera with my new credit card, then just pay off the credit card with the money I had already saved. And that would already get me, you know, $1,000 worth of spend on a credit card to kind of give me a, a head start or a boost on actually meeting that minimum spend. Now, mistake number five that people are making is not accruing enough to make the annual fee actually worth paying uh, past that actual first year. Now, I think we always look more short term at the actual shiny, you know, sign up bonus offers, but we don't think about how we can use it past year one. For some people, this tactic works fine because they just rotate through different cards year after year. Now, for me, I find it more beneficial to actually leverage these cards that fit perfectly into my lifestyle and make it to where I can actually, you know, either completely earn the value of the annual fee back year after year or where it can actually have a pretty decent effect on my quality of life for a small fee. Now, the card I'm actually talking about is the Amex Platinum card, which I'm going to link to a video I shot about it down below which this card, despite not being able to completely offset the annual fee past the year number one, it's still such an excellent value for me. The reason being I'm able to, you know, get access to lounges that I typically have to pay so much more for when I'm considering the amount of traveling that I'm doing. Okay. So that's kind of how you really want to make sure that you look at it. Look at cards that you can keep for the long term that actually incorporate themselves well into your life, where it's like, it's not like you're incurring additional expenses. You're still spending the same amount that you normally would. It's just now you're running your expenses through credit cards that can get you even more value. Now, if you're interested in learning more about those two cards that I mentioned, check out both the Amex Platinum and the Gold Card videos here. And be sure that you also subscribe. And in the comments down below, let me know what other types of videos you'd be interested in hearing more from me about. Alrighty, I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure that you hit that sub button and I'll see you at the next one. Peace.